If you see bags on the rise, it is springtime here in New York and uh, super allergies. So that's what's going on. Letting you know I'm human. Today, we're talking about the gut-brain connection, brain fog, brain fatigue, anxiety, depression, ADHD, stress. Guess what they all have in common? Your belly. The gut and the brain are connected, physically connected. I don't just mean this metaphorically. And I know sometimes it's hard to imagine because everything is so separated these days. You have one doctor for the belly, one doctor for the brain, one doctor for your knees. And it just seems like everything is not connected because everyone's in different offices. It seems impossible to think that everything's connected. It's all in one body. So today, let's talk about the gut-brain access, how your belly affects your brain. As always, I'd like to let you know how to reach me and my team. If you are on YouTube, not sure what you're waiting for, don't forget to like and subscribe because it makes us feel like we're doing this for a reason when we help people. And if you're listening on the podcast, and I know some of you are gardening and listening to the podcast, hi. My hair always looks amazing. I'm always wearing a stethoscope that my wife gave me, and I'm wearing a gray sweater. Follow us on Instagram at The New Method because we are funny. And share this with the people that you love because this could help them. If this may not be the topic for you, you might feel like your brain's on point, which is awesome. But share this with other people. I am. My name is Afrat Lamandre and everyone calls me Eve. And I invented the new method where we empower people to realize that their symptoms are not in their head. So join the conversation wherever you are. Let us know that you're here and let's dive in. And as you know, I always start with a definition. What is the gut brain access? It's a two way communication between the gut and the brain. So that means the brain tells the belly some things and the belly talks back. And what they say to each other affect our mental health. This episode gets a little technical in explaining the communication, and it's okay if you don't follow each point. I did want to bring this episode to the next level. I've done gut-brain access before in, on one level. I'm diving a little deeper this time. And if you miss a few points or it gets too technical, that's okay. That's what two speed is for. But what I want you to get out of it is an overall understanding that if your belly isn't right, your mind isn't right. So right now, if you're struggling with any mental health issues, I really want you to consider starting with fixing your belly. And then of course, I'll do a recap and put it all together for you, so don't worry. So our first communication, how is this communication happening? The very first thing we have to talk about is the nerves and the nervous system. First, the vagus nerve, not the city, it's the nerve. It's the longest nerve in the body and it literally runs from the brainstem to the abdomen. So the belly and brain are literally connected. This nerve serves as a highway of information between the brain and the belly. When you smell or see food, it can trigger the vagus nerve to send signals to the brain that stimulate the release of digestive enzymes, right? So you're seeing it in your brain and then your belly releases digestive enzymes. And then when you eat food, the vagus nerve sends signals back to the brain to let us know, hey, let's release some hormones like ghrelin that stimulates hunger and leptin, which signals when you're full. So there's that connection. When you experience stress, the brain sends signals to the gut to slow down. And sometimes that's why people have like belly issues when they're stressed. And when the gut's inflamed, guess what? It sends signals back up the vagus nerve to tell the brain, hey, we're inflamed, we're agitated, maybe you should release some stress hormone because something's going on, which affects your mood and behavior. That's just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to nerves. The gut affects your entire nervous system. Have you ever heard of the sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system? Really no big deal. They're just like in charge of automatic control of all your bodily functions like heart rate, breathing, and digestions, NBD. So the sympathetic nervous system is basically your body's fight or flight response when faced with stress. It increases heart rate, breathing rate, blood pressure, and slows down digestion to divert energy to other parts of the body. The parasympathetic nervous system is the opposite. It's the rest and digest response. It's when the body's relaxed. It slows down heart rate and breathing and increases digestion. So let me say it again. When rest and digest, parasympathetic nervous system is activated, we're relaxed, our gut function is optimized, we have blood flow to the gut, we're absorbing nutrients, we're releasing digestive enzymes. So when you're calm, your body is digesting food and nutrients in a great way. Now, when the fight or flight sympathetic nervous system is activated, like when you're stressed out, it is focused on the stress and slows down digestion because it's busy going into this fight. And this leads to gut issues like bloating and constipation. This is why people who are stressed will often have bloating and constipation. I actually have a patient just like that, who even when her nutrition is 100% on point, as soon as she's stressed, she gets bloating. That's this connection. Sound familiar? 
Now, in the reverse direction, if you have inflammation in the belly, like IBS, IBD, Crohn's, ulcerative colitis, that actually, so the inflammation's here, but it also creates a stress response. So your belly pain will create a stress response. So they constantly are talking to each other. Okay, so we covered the nerve connection. Let's go to microbiome. And if you are listening to this and you don't know what microbiome is, you haven't been paying attention, <laughs> make sure to listen to some of the episodes or TikTok because we talk about it all the time. But Cliff Notes version of microbiome is your gut made up of trillions of microorganisms, bacteria, viruses, fungi, and other organisms that live in the intestine. Here's how the microbiome affects our mental health. Ever heard of dopamine, serotonin, GABA? Sound familiar? You kind of sort of know has to do with anxiety and depression. These are neurotransmitters. They're chemicals that are in charge of our mood, how happy we are, how sad we are, our appetite. And guess where they're produced? In the belly. In fact, all the bacteria in your belly that make them in the gut microbiome, they're the ones that make these neurotransmitters. So if the gut microbiome is not balanced, it leads to changes in neurotransmitters, which of course contributes to mental health issues. So before going for the medication, I'm not against medication, but before going for medication, you might consider that your belly is imbalanced and that's why you don't have enough serotonin and dopamine. Studies have been shown that depression, people with depression have lower levels of certain good bacteria that produces the serotonin. So for many people, giving them probiotics, fixing the belly, healing the belly is a step in improving anxiety and depression. Here's another way the microbiome affects your mental health. There's something called the blood-brain barrier. Now you need a barrier. It's protective. It separates the brain from harmful substances in the bloodstream. It's really important. We use it all the time. But the gut microbiome affects that barrier and it can produce things that can get through it, which we don't usually want. So when the gut microbiome is imbalanced, it leads to having a kind of open blood-brain barrier, which allows harmful substances to enter the brain and cause inflammation. Studies have shown that people with multiple sclerosis, Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, have a disrupted gut microbiome, which leads to inflammation in the brain. So your belly is not on point, opens up the barrier, and allows certain things in. And if that wasn't enough, our gut bacteria affect our stress levels and vice versa. Stress causes an imbalance in our gut bacteria by changing the ratio of good and bad, which leads to inflammation, which leads to mental health issues. And stress can also affect our stress response system, which releases cortisol and makes us stress. Our gut bacteria in return can impact the system by producing chemicals that interact with the stress system. So you see, it's one big circle. Now, if we're going to talk about microbiome, we need to talk about leaky gut. And again, if you don't know what leaky gut is, you haven't been following me long enough, time to hop on one of my other episodes. So microbiome is where everything lives. Leaky gut is a condition where the gut lining becomes too permeable, allowing with harmful substances like toxins and bacteria to enter the bloodstream and cause inflammation throughout the body. So this inflammation from leaky gut can impact mental health by changing how the neurotransmitters are produced. Remember, serotonin and dopamine are cooked in the belly and inflammation is not part of that recipe. So if you now have inflammation because of leaky gut, it's messing up the recipe and you're not going to cook the right neurotransmitters. And the more inflammation we have, the more damage to the gut lining, making the whole thing worse. Leaky gut also impacts the absorption of the nutrients and vitamins, which can affect the brain and mental health. So if we are deficient in B vitamins, omega-3 fatty acids, we need that for the recipe to make all the neurotransmitters. But if we have leaky gut, we may not be absorbing it well. And leaky gut impacts the production of something called short-chain fatty acids, SCFAs. These are products that we need to create neurotransmitters. So if your short-chain fatty acids are low, you're not producing these neurotransmitters. And short-chain fatty acids are also anti-inflammatory. So if you don't have enough of them, you have more inflammation. So again, earlier I said sometimes people with anxiety and depression need some probiotics, but sometimes it's not just probiotics. They actually need to supplement with short-chain fatty acids. Let's put it all together. If it isn't clear enough yet, your gut plays a critical role in your mental health. Your vagus nerves runs between your brain and your gut. Your sympathetic and parasympathetic is impacted by your belly. That's fight or flight, arrest and digest. Your neurotransmitters, serotonin and dopamine, are produced by your gut. Your blood-brain barrier is affected by your gut. The quality of your microbiome affects your mental health. And leaky gut affects inflammation and short-chain fatty acids needed for mental health. And guess what? The list gets even longer, but that would make this episode too long, so I'm not going to go into it, but I think you're getting a sense of what's going on. 
This is not just, oh yeah, I may have a butterfly in my stomach. It's literally all connected. So now that we established that the connection between gut and brain is clear, now we have to see what do we need to do next? How do we keep our gut healthy, right? That's the next question. So of course, you know what I'm going to say. I'm going to say that you have to start with your gut. Just have to start with your gut. Eating a healthy, balanced diet is key to maintaining gut health. This means including plenty of whole foods, like fruits, vegetables, as well as sources of prebiotics and probiotics. Probiotics are the bacteria that live in your belly, and prebiotics are fibers that feed the good bacteria in the gut. Basically, you have to feed the pets that live inside of you. So that's putting in the good stuff, but you always have to avoid the bad stuff. Avoid the things that can harm your gut, the antibiotics, the processed foods. Antibiotics can disrupt the balance of good and bad bacteria in the gut, Processed foods can be difficult for the gut to digest and contribute to inflammation. Of course, NSAIDs are another doozy for your belly, so please only use it if you need to. And pay attention to things that bother your belly, to food intolerances or sensitivities. Some people have sensitivity to certain foods like gluten or dairy. And if that causes, if anything that you eat causes inflammation, it's going up here. You have to remember that it's not just in your belly. And reducing stress is a huge part of it. It's not only important for here, but it's now, it's also important for your gut health. So stress is not just about, ah, oh, taking a deep breath, of course that helps, but chronic stress actually leads to imbalance in the gut microbiome, which again, brings it back up to the brain. So it's kind of a loop, not kind of, it's a loop. Getting enough sleep is an important aspect of gut health. Sleep deprivation disrupts the gut microbiome. And remember, a disrupted gut microbiome causes inflammation, which goes to mental health. And then supplements, everyone always likes to know what supplements to use. You're going to want to get a good quality probiotics, short chain fatty acid. Vitamin A is great for lining and glutamine is an amino acid that helps repair the gut lining. So overall, improving your gut health requires a total body approach, right? We're talking about sleep, nutrition, all of that. It has to do with healthy diet, stress management, adequate sleep, avoiding harmful substances, targeted supplements, right? Don't just take everything on the shelf, the ones that you need for your lining and regular movement. And by taking care of our gut, we can improve the communication between the gut and the brain and support optimal mental and physical health. So if you want your brain to be happy, you need your belly to be happy. And I know I gave a lot of information today. And if you want to work with us as a guide, here's how you reach us at the new method everywhere, except for Twitter, because I talk too much. So new method on Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, our website, anywhere, you name it, send us a message. We can tell you how you can work with us. And at the end of the day, I'm hoping that this helps you because all of you, every single one of you, you always knew that there was a better way. I'll see you next week.